system is relieved of its confusion. There are documented cases of this, hundreds of them, by several clinical psychologists. So it's not just an oddball theory, it's actually really happening. Okay, we've been talking an awful lot here about our spiritual side and our material side. And we've been uh, talking and figuring out about how we go through life cycles. We go through seven steps of development of human life. So, and all of this is following the logic of the creation. All of these things that we go through, these cycles of life that we go through, are all embedded in us. The instructions, so to speak, and the matrix that controls all of this life cycling and evolution is already built into the creation itself. Because we are a bit part of the creation and we are just going through the cycles the way it was meant to be. So that's why we have seven stages of development, and that's why we are actually two beings. We are a spiritual being, which is going through a series of material lives. Those material lives, those personalities, that's you and I on the material side. We are Barbara, Nancy, Bob, Larry, whatever our particular personality is right now. But that's a material being. Just for a moment, I'd like for you to get the exhibit that I um, have in the little handbook. There's a drawing of uh, a big circle, and it says the, uh, the, the uh, two-part being on there. There's, it says on the left side, the material side and the spiritual. And I'd like to explain to you a little bit, as it was explained to me, how the material being and the spiritual being actually interact and what's going on while we're in this material life. You see, even as you're listening, thinking, all the time that you're in your material life, you are also a spiritual being. And that spiritual being is in there all the time, listening, paying attention, and trying to gain in spiritual growth. That's the, uh, the, the whole impotence why you're trying to learn all the time. That's what drives you to find, find out things, to make a quest for information. The spirit needs food. And the food it needs, the way it eats, is experience. It's truth. It needs wisdom from your experiences. So you're always encouraged by your spirit to go try things, look into things, and search for answers. And that's where that comes from. Well, on my little drawing here that you're looking at, you see on the left side it says material side, and over on the right side it says spiritual side. Now what I've done here is I've just made a little drawing to show you the relationships between the material and the spiritual. It's just a little diagram to explain a few things. You notice on the left side, it says that there's a conscious part on the material side. Now, we know that. <clears throat> That's what we're using right now as we you know, sit there and listen to this tape. We have a conscious side, a conscious mind that we use all the time when we're awake. We also have a subconscious. Some people call it unconscious. Some people are unconscious. But we have a subconscious self. The subconscious uh, has its uh, little machinery that it does. It's kind of like the engine of our self. It's where we do all of our, you know, our, our thought processing, our number crunching, and so forth. And then there's a thing that's called the psyche. The psyche over there is kind of your storehouse. That's where you keep all of your material memories, ideas, and conclusions, and so forth. It's kind of like the hard drive on your computer. Okay. Uh, then there's a little thing there that says we form. We'll come back to that in a second. And in the middle it says filter. Well, there's a filter between your material side and your spiritual side. See, even though your spirit is awake all the time, it's listening to everything that your material side is doing. A lot of things it just isn't interested in. We have a lot of thoughts, feelings, and ideas that ramble around in our head that our spirit has no interest in. It doesn't want those. It's looking for the wisdom from our experiences, which are correct according to creation. It's trying to add to itself through growth, through your experience, through your material, personal experiences. So there's a filter in between. I call it a filter, but it's just kind of a little something in there that it's kind of like a microphone. I guess it's listening to your material self, and it receives information, and it decides whether or not it's correct and uh, whether or not it's interesting to accept it. Over on your spiritual side, there's also a spiritual conscious mind. It's like a receiver and sender unit. There's also a subconscious on the spiritual side. It also can think, do some number crunching and so forth. There's a little we form there, which I'll explain in a minute. And then there's something called the Gemut, G-E-M-U-T, Gemut. It's a word in German, which means receiver and sender or sense sensor. 
it's slightly different than the psyche, its counterpart on the material side, and that the psyche only stores information and all your memories from your material life. Okay? But the game mood, on the other hand, is more of a sensing device because it's connected to other forms of information, higher levels of thinking. This is where your spiritual power comes in. The ability to use the gay moot as a sensing device to actually move out and get information from different sources. And there's a language concerned with that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Well, these are the basic parts of the material side and of the spiritual side. So let's talk about those just a little bit. Let me explain a little bit about what each one does and <clears throat> excuse me, what happens as you're going through your day-to-day -day thinking. Okay, over on the material side, you notice up on the top there, it has the five senses there. that We've got sight and touch and smell and hearing and so forth, your senses there. And you know what these are. This is how we gather information. Now, here's what happens. Your material self, as we've mentioned before, the reason for your material life is to gather information. Once you gather that information... Uh, then you proceed to think about it, you form logic, and you do a little number crunching, whatever. You make conclusions, and you store that information. And once that information becomes part of yourself, it becomes the wisdom from those experiences, and that's added to your spiritual growth. Here's how it works. Let's say you're having an experience, and let's um, make up some sort of experience here. Let's say something common in life, uh, maybe a career move. you got a new job. Okay? You've been working at a company for a while, and... You know, a big promotion's coming up, and uh, uh, there's you and two or three other people that are online for the promotion. Now, let's make this a happy story. So let's say you get the promotion, all right? Well, as we're going through life all the time, we're using all of our senses all the time to gather data, aren't we? You know, right now you're using your ears to listen to what I'm saying, and you use your eyes to read information, and we have touch. Uh, we touch things to see what it's about. We smell it. We taste it. These are how we, all of our sensors are out there, material sensors, are always gathering information and feeding it to us. Well, as soon as that information comes in from our sensors, as soon as we see something, uh, our conscious mind regulates all of these sensors. As it receives that information, it very, very quickly uh, runs right down to see if we have any information on that. You see, the conscious mind actually can't make any decisions on its own. It has an entirely different function. It's responsible for gathering the information and bringing it in and so forth. But on its own, it can't make any decisions really on its own. So it doesn't. Actually, what it does is that when that information comes in from you, uh, it quickly directs that thought or idea directly to your subconscious to see if we have any data on that. Because in your subconscious is all of your knowledge. And it wants to know if this new incoming thought... Uh, if it's, we're sympathetic to it or uh, if we have any feelings about this. What's our opinions? Do we have any knowledge? Is there any data on this thing that just came in? And it's done very, very quickly. So what happens is, as you're listening to this tape, reading a book, or you know, you just heard some information about this promotion that you're going to get it, you become very excited, but maybe uh, somebody says something, well, gee, the person who gets the promotion is going to be the one who had the highest sales. And you're quickly thinking, oh, sales. Your mind flashes off into, like, you know, running back over all of your sales numbers to see if you're, you know, think you might be eligible. Well, as soon as you heard that information about the sales, your ears picked it up. It went through your conscious mind. Your conscious mind turns around immediately. And in an instant, in a flash, it runs to your subconscious to get any data to see what we think about that. And then comes back and gives a feeling or an impulse.